This is Electric Universe Size. This is Electric Universe Size, and today I'm back with part two. The reveal. The reveal. Of testing Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University, hypothesis, mud fossilization of soft tissue. In a month, 587 of you have watched this and have eagerly awaited the results. And yes, I like my own video too. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Cause I do. I think I do pretty good work. And if you think so, drop a like on this one. All right, here's what we're here for. We're going to observe the aftermath of discharging 10,000 volts DC current through this for a week. And at the end, I just decided to zap the top. You have to watch the last video to catch up. If this is the first time you're here, go back, watch that, then come back here. Anyway, what we're gonna do is first turn it over and see what loose stuff falls out. It has been sitting here for a month. Natural moisture has attacked it. There are pieces that I could blow out. Oof. Dusty. <laughs> anyway, look at all that dusty stuff that came out there. I'm gonna shake it good. Here it is. Hmm. See the spiraling going around this way? And here it spirals down this way. And maybe I can turn the specimen itself and you'll be able to see how it spirals in here. And you can even see this tip right here spiraling in. So if you can imagine a vortex of energy and what that would do on a a wet, muddy landscape with a, an arcing discharge at the end, this is what it would look like. I can think of some places around the world that you can go look at the geology there, and it's got some very strikingly similar features. There is my little algae eater. Looks like he did not make it. So he was more on the surface where the arc was vaporizing the water off the top. And this little guy doesn't look like he much got replaced with other minerals because he was not compacted down below. Instead, he essentially just got vaporized away. Along these edges here, it definitely is vitrified and glassy. Those were the spots that were glowing. Look at that, very shiny down inside. And then look at that, that little point here. Look at all those little spherules on the tip. There's just spherules everywhere. The top over here looks almost Golden copper. Gorgeous. Very oxidized. And look at that right there, the difference between the crust down here separating, the coloration. This side over here was the anode. That side buried down below is the cathode. Hydrogen collects on the cathode side. Oxygen collects over at the anode side. So this is where all the oxygen was coming out, getting sucked up. And that hydrogen was getting pulled down below and occasionally bubbling out those little pits right there. I recall there being at least two pits 
that's the one that primarily bubbled most of the hydrogen gas. All right, what I want to do now is take the microscope view of the surface and as far down into the cracks as I can get and observe this before we crack it open and look at the inside.
All right, now that we did that, let's go ahead and bust this thing open. I am going to try to tap the side with a welder's hammer and see if I can just get it to crack. But I won't do it on that side since that side's all shallow. Let's, um, let's try it on this side, which is fully solid. This should be the side where the fish is. So. That is going to definitely cause a problem because it's breaking all the parts off, but might not necessarily be a problem. I'm going to take some photos first. All right, let's just try this. glass. <laughs> All right, so kind of broke some more things loose on the top. I'm going to dump out what falls out. <clears throat> hmm. Let's... That's interesting looking. Crumbly. Cool little spherules. It's like a um, looks like a geode shell almost. Oh, there's the spine of my fish. Yeah, sorry, little guy. You know his sp spine does look. I can't see it in the uh, camera view, but with my normal eyes, I can see it sparkling. Well, maybe you can here too. It's got this sparkle to it. Keep all these pieces up here. Got glass in there too. That's not, not, not what I intended. <laughs> that is really cool looking. Okay, what I should do here... What I'm going to do is get something to dump this in so that I don't have a problem with this, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll just dump it. Let's just dump it. Alright, let's try to break this thing off. Now, because I... Did not succeed. Quite last time. Ooh, okay. The bottom came right off. And that's weird already. What in the heck is this? What have I done? What in the... Hmm? 
What is th what is that? Hmm. Hmm. I did not expect whatever this is. Something mold? Dude. Spider eggs? Um, I think that was the fish, his head. That was his head. Yeah. It's just weird still. Well, what happens when I wait, huh? Yeah, that's... Dude. It's either a mold or spider eggs? I think. I don't know. Freaking crap is this? It's definitely part of the trap. What? What? I don't know. Gotta think that's just some sort of bacteria. What in the world is that? What is that on the right? So that's all shiny, glassy looking. What? And I'm gonna have to see what this is under the microscope. Hmm. Well, strange. Very strange. I'm going to put this piece over here and uh, it's weird, man. Those, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna set that over there. Keep finding glass. I don't like the glass part in there. I shouldn't have done it that way. I shouldn't have done it that way.
Well, I can't quite tell what this is, but it does have crystallization here. Well, let's open it up some more. You know what, let's just look down inside because this is, uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure about this. All right. That is just strange. And what's all this blue stuff? I didn't have any blue stuff. I had zero blue things in my sand or my clay. What is this blue stuff? I wanna know what this blue stuff is. That still is just weird. It's not hard as a rock. It didn't get baked to turn into a rock. So that's my first, that's my first observation is it's still sand, see? about this oh yeah he's soft look at that just flakes away so not fossilized weird. It's weird how that turned out. What are these little hairy things? What is that? What the heck is that? So I think before I take it apart anymore, I've, I've already concluded that it did not turn to rock, it did not turn to stone. Uh, the insides were not preserved. And I don't know if this is a, a bacteria, a fungi. It's probably some sort of fungus that I've never seen before. Um, strange. Some of these minerals collected on the side, like right here. Down there, you can't see it. You can see down there, which actually would have been facing up, there is some material collected over there. So uh, before I disturb this anymore, let's do some more microscope footage.
So this is turning out kind of uh, interesting and weird at the same time. So under the microscope, all this stuff that looks blue right here uh, actually is red. And I don't know if it's blood or not, but it that's how it reacts to the light. It's weird, totally weird. That stuff right there, that's strange. All right, let's break this thing open more. Oh, and that is, it does not smell good. 
Mm, it's putrid, actually. Ah, oh. oh, it does not smell pleasant at all. But look at this. What the heck? Look at that. It's just like cotton balls, man. What in the world is this stuff? You see all this red clay definitely got oxidized. There's a bone. It's the electrode. I don't know exactly um, where the screw went though. That fell off about right here. It's, it's gone. Wow, it totally oxidized, I think. Am I crazy? Oh, this was that part down in the bottom of that little cavern that it made. That looks interesting. It's still strange. That's the natural color of the clay. Oxidized and then black and white orange and reds and then I'll get these little sparkly things in there every once in a while well so the question is is where is the um, metal screw what is this the heck is that? Is that an acorn? Did I drop an acorn in there? Man. That looks like a root. It is an acorn. Yeah, it stinks. It does smell bad. So this got cooked. Hmm, acorn still seems fine. It could still grow. I don't know. see the oxygen exchange on this side you can see it clearly travel up in a spiral motion right you can see the separation here and here's another example see where the oxygen was affecting the clay
clear delineation between gray clay, red oxygenated clay, faded back up to a gray, and then more of a blue charred uh, with white in it. And this side is red oxygenated clay, but then it's got just this weird material in there. And I want to think that, I don't know, it could be a combination of the salts or the iron oxide, uh, but it definitely has turned red. Under the microscope, it looks like ruby red. It's a pretty dark color. Mm. This is definitely harder than on top, but it still can be crumbled. Ugh. Here it is, right here. Hmm. I mean, it's definitely dehydrated. Um, you know, I had this wild thought because I had another mixture of mud and had I poured more mud in there and then ran it again or put more mud in there and then baked it, or even ran high amperage through it, perhaps that would have turned it to stone. I'm not sure, but I will say that it does seem like the minerals played a role. Look, you can even see it coating the outside here. Look, there's the little dude's spine. You know, I... I think all these fibers are a fungi or a mold. So. It definitely smells terrible. Well, see now this is this part's pretty hard right here. <clears throat> well, see the oxygenated that that red stuff is not. Uh, but well, it is more compact. This gray part is more compact, which would make more sense if um, makes sense that. The red oxygenated stuff would still just be this red sand. So that's where all the oxygen was coming out of. And this thicker clay stuff, or this thicker gray stuff is a lot harder. It's not, it's more of, you know, it's kind of turned into sandstone. It would have got a little harder or maybe even gotten uh, wet and gone through the process again. Man, maybe, maybe it would have worked. I even had someone say that, you know, maybe I need a larger container or a smaller specimen because if we're talking about on a continental planetary scale, the magnetic field and the the discharges definitely be a lot greater than the size of the fish in this little bitty jar, right? So, you know, look at this. That's pretty hard stuff. It's a hard sandstone. So, I'm gonna say it's plausible I just haven't got this. This is my first experiment, so maybe I can try, try again. Um, Roger Spur says that he did this with chicken. I guess some raw chicken breast. 
or some raw chicken pieces. Um, I would like to see that video. If anybody has the link to that, if he shows his experiment and the result and he actually did fossilize a piece of meat, I would love to see that and try to recreate it. Well, so this, this part here, which look, it's got some pieces of bone in it and whatever this is sticking out of it, I think that might be a piece of bone. You know, perhaps, uh, perhaps some of this did get fossilized because this is, this isn't breaking up very easy. So, I like this one the best out of all these pieces because it's not crumbling in my hands. This one's kind of cool, but that one just, see, broke apart like nothing. Even though the inside of that looks pretty cool. Look at that. All right. Let's wrap this up with the uh, microscope looking at both of these pieces here to close it out. Again, I know the first video was hella long. This one's moderately long. We're gonna look at this one as well. And this guy. So look, these four pieces here is what we're gonna close this out with. And before we check out the microscope of these, I want to say that my experiment here, I believe is inconclusive. Inconclusive? because I did not make a solid stone. That's what I want to do. B, the fish itself seems to have just dilapidated, so uh, I did not maintain even a shape in a rock. This might be the closest to anything that I accomplished this round. Uh, I still don't know what happened here exactly, but I may try this experiment again.